Hello, it's Wednesday again. Where is the time going? I feel like every other day I'm popping up here and I'm going, it's Wednesday again. It's so weird. Um, so today I'm kind of excited because it's one of my friends. They're all friends really, aren't they? But this is like one of my older friends in terms of how long we've known each other. So I'm talking to Amanda Whitehead today. Um, we've been friends since 2006, I believe. I keep saying 2007 and she corrects me every time. Um, she's amazeballs. We met when we were both doing holistic therapies. We did an Ayurvedic course together. Loads of stories about that I could tell you, uh, but I won't. Um, <laughs> I can see her laughing in the green room. <laughs> Maybe we'll get onto that if there's time later on. Um, but yeah, so she's had an amazing journey, done all kinds of different things since we met and we were doing our holistic therapies together. Uh, and it's been really lovely watching her journey and watching the kind of diversity of experiences that she's had. So she was a must to have on. Um, this session to talk to you because I think it's really interesting what she's done, what she's achieved and she's got these amazing huge goals that she wants to achieve in the future which I just think is really inspiring. So let me bring on Amanda. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you my love? I am fab. Thank you very much. The sun's shining. It's warm. What more could you want? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It makes such a difference when it's sunny, though, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Especially for your mood. Yeah, instant lift. So I don't want to wabber on too much because there's so much that I want to um, ask you and extract from you because I think it, you know it's really interesting the the work you've been doing and what you want to do and stuff so give us give us a kind of a in a nutshell what it is you do tell us about you so in a nutshell I work with both men and women to help them to realign their gut understand how their body actually works and also understand what food choices work for them individually and what don't, but also looking at the reasons why. So they really understand what's going to fuel them rather than zap them of their energy. Um, and my goal at the end of it is for them to become an, ex uh, an expert of their unique self. So they go out, they live life on their terms and they know who they are and they shine their light just authentically. Yeah, because it's so much more than just sort of what you eat, isn't it? It's a, it's not about a kind of a diet, the work that you do. It's all about what's unique about that person's body and what helps them to kind of function and thrive in the everyday and understanding how to maintain that and make more of that, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Like I had a chat with a lady the other day and she was saying that she was looking to have a little bit of help. But from a mental wellness point of view, she was like balanced. She was absolutely fine. And that's amazing. But then she told me that there's things that she knows she needs to do for her health, but she just doesn't do it. So for me, you need to start because there's little sections of our mindset for each thing about in our lives. So you have to look at why do you know you need to do it but what's stopping you from doing it and I do believe that's a lot of the mindset it's a lot of what we're listening to the thoughts that we've got before you can go on to understand your body and then actually start putting I don't like to call it habits because I think it's more about balance but actually changing things so that you actually live the way that you want to live doing what you need to do and just sometimes having that support first just to put those habits and you know get that balance over the few weeks that we work together and then you can go off and fly yeah it's kind of like accelerating things isn't it that's the way I think about it it's the you know it's the same when I work with people you have to kind of help people to get the foundation and get to a place where then they can do it themselves it's not about having a you know a coach forever is it it's just about helping you to fill the gaps that you've got get the techniques and the structure and then you're off and, and flying yourself, aren't you? Yeah. So tell me, tell me about your story, you know, because obviously 
I know you've been through lots of adventures in your <laughs> lifetime um, and there's always I find some struggle or challenge that we encounter ourselves that you know that's the reason why we do what we do in the type of work that we do is because kind of we've had the pain we've had the struggle and you want to help other people not go through that so you know tell us your story what's you know what's your story on that yeah, so I think my journey has taken me through lots of different things and it hasn't always been just about me either. My daughters have a massive role to play in what I'm now trying to create, especially my youngest. Um, so to begin with, when I first met you and we were doing the Ayurvedic massage and stuff, my marriage wasn't great. Um, I was struggling with some things. I think by the time I'd met you, I'd possibly done some Reiki. Um, and personally that actually helped me stay strong and go through things because I'd got irritable bowel syndrome and I'd also been diagnosed with an underactive thyroid which um, I don't believe ever goes away but you can keep it under control with lifestyle. Um, so I was doing a lot of research and things into that but then not long after I met you I went through my divorce um, which change your life upside down. My daughter before that had been diagnosed with neutropenia, which is another autoimmune disease. Um, and I didn't realize that it was like a lifestyle choice, neutropenia, until I started really digging. Um, and I was questioning myself on how a five-year-old could have a lifestyle autoimmune illness, because I was making the choices of what she ate, um, she had open heart surgery when she was three so after she'd had that she was like a little Duracell battery she never stopped other than when she slept so she was getting the movement and things she was getting all the cooking from fresh and whatnot but when we actually went through the divorce my health was declining because I was so stressed and you know like emotions were high but my daughter's health was like rocketing it was getting so much better and it was just sort of you know so it made me look at how important our environment is and how massive and that's not from a who you're choosing it's actually how it's affecting you you know your stress levels the different kinds of stressors and at the time i was going more and more into hope ear candling reiki specializing in massage bringing the ayurvedic stuff in so i looked at the ayurvedic lifestyle and the foods and stuff and started working with my clients on a deeper level because I was finding that I'd got a lot of clients that were suffering with anxiety and depression, but they were coming with things like fibromyalgia and um, ME and all sorts of different things which were autoimmune. Um, and so I started working with them and sharing what I was doing. And then um, we've moved a lot. Um, I kept on going really with the massage, but bringing coaching in. So I did my... Um, lifestyle and nutrition coaching and then I met my second husband who I'm with now he's amazing he supports me in everything I do and again that was a massive lesson for me for having people that actually cheerlead you that want you to do good rather than doing what I was doing but always feeling like I was like the best way I can describe it is trying to climb up a bucket you've got these crabs and you just keep getting your legs and like dragging you back into it and you start trying to climb back up again and you're constantly like having that fight. Um, so all the visions that I had, I'd kind of kept inside. And when I met Drew, we kind of talked about it and he was like, well, there's no reason why you can't do that. There's no reason why you can't do that. So I went self-employed. I carried on with the massage and things, um, coaching clients, helping them to stabilize blood sugars, um, you know, reverse diabetes type two, really get themselves back to where they needed to be. And then, COVID hit <laughs> and the massage room closed and I found that um, a lot of clients were struggling but also for the last seven years we've been um, supporting my youngest daughter through mental health challenges herself and in first lockdown she was admitted to um, a mental health unit which was massively stressful, very challenging, however the purpose I believe of it was to take me to the next stage of my journey of how I can help people. So it learnt me a lot of lessons. And I know last week, bless you, you sent me a message saying, I haven't seen you on social media for a while, are you okay? I'm very much at the minute still on my journey of finding who I am 
Um, and I think because I'm actually trying to educate my clients on being present, I'm trying to, I'm doing the same and I don't always want to be on social media. So I'm trying to find a balance. Um, but what I did do in first lockdown is create the Gut Works programme, which is what I'm working on lots now. Um, and the other visions that you talked about, the big goals, I'm in talks with now, I'm having meetings with people to get those off the ground um, and get those up and running. So it's that people are tre more on the holistic side um so yeah it's been a bumpy ride but it's been an exciting one um and i suppose sometimes you just i believe you have to look at each opportunity that comes your way and they're all opportunities mm -hmm. there's a lesson in all of it and there's silver linings in all of it and sometimes you have to sit and get quiet and look for those to be able to move on yeah absolutely that's a massive learning for me is this concept of every challenge has a gift and an opportunity in it doesn't it but sometimes it's so hard to see that because you're in the thick of it and you're you know you're angry you're upset you're frustrated all of that stuff and it's so easy to get sucked down into that but you just need that tiny little grain don't you that little grain of hope that says there is something more if you just look if you just take a different perspective and look at this in a different way you will find something to get you out of that situation so i love that um I really want to ask you to tell us a bit more about the whole gut and brain connection because I think that's fascinating. Whenever we talk, we always get onto this, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's interesting for pe people to know about. So tell us a bit about that. You know, what have you found? How do you help people with that balance between gut and brain? Yeah, so when I first started looking into all this and really researching it, I was curious I suppose because I was getting a lot of people that had either got digestive issues like irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's or colitis and things like that or I'd got people that were suffering with anxiety and whichever way they came to me they would have the symptoms of the other thing and when you look deeper into the majority of autoimmune diseases to be fair you either start off with gut issues or you start with the anxiety and the depression and the stress. Um, and really it's all linked. So I found that by researching, um, the gut and the brain talk to each other every single day. And actually the gut talks to the brain more than the brain talks to the gut. And it's done through um, a huge nerve in our body called the vagus nerve. So it's through blood. And um, what I also learned as well years ago was that 90% of our serotonin is made in the gut and so is our immune system and there's a whole load of um, other hormones that are produced in your gut as well and then there's quite a few that's produced in the brain and they both transport the hormones through to the gut or through to the brain and onto the different um, organs and so if you've got inflammation in your gut if you've got like gut issues then you've got inflammation in your brain and i don't say that to scare people but it's the same way the other way if you've got inflammation in your brain then you've got inflammation in your gut and you've got two main hormones so you've got the cortisol which is like our stress hormone and you've got um gosh i can't think of what it's called ah! um <laughs> you've got your sleep hormone I can't remember what it's called. Um, but anyway, you're supposed melatonin. to have a balance. Thank you very much, melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're supposed to have a balance. So at a certain time of day, your melatonin will produce, which helps you to settle down. And then in the morning, you'll produce the stress hormone, which helps you to wake up. So it's good to have a certain amount of stress. But if they're out of line, it impacts your sleep which is going to impact your mental health because the decisions you're making are from being tired. The food choices you're making are just quick, fast, because you can't be bothered. And that impacts your gut health because obviously then everything's, you know, not resting. So your brain gut connection is so, so important. And I think it's important as well. Like 
with the journey that we've been on with my youngest, you know, a lot of the time we're told, you know, oh, well, they've got an issue, they've got an illness in their brain, you know, there's a chemical imbalance and it's not, it's gut related. And if you can balance that, then you can, you know, you can help reduce that anxiety and things. And so if you're not actually working at nourishing your gut, you're always going to have physical and mental issues because the two of them work so closely together. Um, but what I've also started working very closely with my clients with as well, and this is through a journey that I'm on myself at the minute, seeing a functional practitioner myself because of stress and things from going through what we did in the first lockdown is how important the liver is. So it's important that we are nourishing our bodies with food, but actually doing practices like breath work, meditation, mm -hmm. practicing gratitude, journaling, like there's so many things you can do. And again, it's finding what works for you because you don't need to do every single one, but you need to find something because you can feed yourself healthy all you like, but if your environment's not great, if your mind wellness isn't great, then you're always going to have that imbalance. And so from my point of view, I like to try and connect the mental, the emotional, the physical, but also the spiritual. And I think that's sometimes the hardest bit for people to start being more spiritual. And I don't mean that from a religious point of view either. I mean it from inner growth. So you actually start getting to know who you are, but also understanding what works for you. So. I get up every morning and start with my breath work and I can feel the difference in my chest just with the breathing, but I can also feel the difference mm. in my gut with how peaceful I feel. And I also find it better for my mindset because I've got more clarity. I feel more focused when I'm working. So it's, you know, that brain gut connection is so important for making sure you're having the right foods, but also making sure that you're doing the mindfulness practices throughout the day as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm doing a live on Monday. Actually, I'm starting a new live on a Monday about Monday motivation. So I'm kicking that off with the morning routine. So I'm kind of introducing all of the different things that you could incorporate so people can then build their own. Because that's been it's been a game changer for me having um, a morning routine that I now do. And it evolves as well, which is what I like about it, because you find that some of the practices you feel like I don't know whether I'm really getting getting anything out of this. And that's okay. It's almost as if it's served its purpose. It's got you to this point and now you need a different practice to come in and let go of that one. So they do sort of evolve and that's kind of what I'm discovering. So I've dropped two or three things and picked up some other things. But yeah, I love that. It is all about that uniqueness, isn't it? We, we all need to develop strategies that work for us, not just a cut and paste from what we see other people doing. So that's brilliant. Um, Tell me about, uh, tell me a bit more about the big dreams, because that's really super exciting, I think. The big and dreams. it ties into that whole kind of purpose and meaning, because I feel like that's something really prominent in you, is you have this, you know, focus that's unwavering and this kind of mission that, um, that you're on. So tell us a bit about that. So the um, big vision is that we have mental health rehab centers with um, therapy centers on site. So when people need that help, it's more like a retreat rather than going into a hospital. It's very holistic. So it's about therapies. It's about um, them learning and taking some responsibility. And this is just going from our personal experience of how it is with how people are trapped within the units that um, Ellie's been in, but it's also um, about when they come out and the support. And I know there's some people that actually, you know, they go into the units and the frontline staff are amazing, don't get me wrong, but they come out and they're on like three year waiting lists or, you know, so they, they're in this cycle and they never get out of it. And for me, I think if you can give somebody something where they are empowered, they feel worthy, they start believing in themselves, they take responsibility. So it's all about them actually coming away with lifestyle, uh, life uh, skills, but also independence. 
and um instead of it being they go in and they're just kind of medicated and um if they if there is therapies then they're quite lucky but most of the time there's not at the minute because unfortunately they've all been cut in the funds um but for, for me it's about them actually having coaching if you like whilst they're at that retreat so we look at what they want where do they want to be and how far can we get them before they leave us but then the communication carries on so they will carry on if they need it to be in therapy centers and that might be having things like rapid transformational therapy or it might be you know that they have regular massage or acupuncture or reflexology and all these different things so it's a different way to support and um, and, and empower people really for me it's about helping them to learn to communicate connect and, emp and and feel empowered so they actually come away with a purpose and a meaning to their lives and they can then carry on in the way they want yeah and again it's about that foundational thing isn't it you're talking about um giving people somewhere to operate from as opposed to treating the symptoms of the illness yeah. and getting that under control but all of the rot for want of a better word is still going on under the surface of it so you're only ever just sticking plasters on top of it but what you're talking about is what I call pulling out the sofa and seeing all that crap behind there that you've not <laughs> hoovered because you've just been hoovering around the sides which yeah. is what I do um but yeah so once you've pulled that sofa out and you've seen the crap it's like oh, oh I've got to do it now um so I love that and that's how you get everything back to a stable level for you to then build something rock solid from so love that yeah i'm just absolutely. mindful of time so tell me about because i'm all about the whole authenticity piece aren't i and loving who we are um and being those unique wonderful beautiful sections along the rainbow so tell me about what's your superpower what's the thing that you love about yourself that's you know intrinsically you do you know, if you would have asked me this a few years ago, I'd have been like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't love myself, you know, oh no. And now I think um, I love the fact that I am me. I am really learning not to take to heart what people think. I'm learning how to step back from my own thoughts and really look at, you know, what, what my mind's telling me that's not true and I think my superpower for other people is that I'm very intuitive so like Drew will say quite a lot you know people will t tell me what's going on and it's like I just know what's what's needed um and I think for me I don't know if this is loving myself but I'm very proud of where I am and what I've actually achieved already but I'm also loving the visions that are growing that I see in my head and I know that they will come to fruition I know that we will do this and when I say we it's because I can't do it on my own so I am looking to build a community of people that can be a part of this because I think that's what we need and I think mm -hmm. that's another thing that's um lacking really in that people feel like they're on their own quite often and sometimes I think you have to you have to learn how to be happy and content on your own mm. because then you can actually bring that community in. And that's something that going through my journey, I have become very comfortable in my own space. I don't feel that I need people with me. And I've also, which this will make you laugh, um, Nick, because you know what I'm like. I've also learned that when I am making decisions, I don't ask other people's opinions anymore. I, get, I sit quiet within myself and I look for the answers within me which is, it's took me a long time to get to that point, but that's where I am now. So I guess I love that about myself as well. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of the trust, isn't it? The, uh, that kind of absolute belief and confidence that whatever happens, whether it's what you expect the outcome to be or not, it doesn't matter because you know that you'll be able to move from that point. Yeah, and um, I think it's and also brilliant. accepting that this is what life's handing you. And again, you can look at it from a point of, oh my gosh, that's not fair. Or you can look at it from a, okay, what does, what am I meant to do here? What is this? You know, how can I move forward with this to grow? 
Um, and it's like going back to what you were saying about your mindfulness practices. You know, sometimes you'll get things that just don't sit right at all because they don't suit you or you'll get things where you do it for a little bit and then you get to a point where you think, mm. but that's because you've grown and you need something deeper. Mm -hmm. You need to go to that deeper level. Um, so, yeah, exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> um, so give us um, your top three things that people can do because obviously it's brilliant we'd all like to work with a coach wouldn't we we'd all like to have that support and accountability not everyone can what can people do for themselves give us like so three i think things. um looking back on my journey i think one of the most important things is practicing gratitude that has mm. to be like one of my top ones i think and it doesn't have to be massive it has to be three things to begin with and don't overthink it, just whatever comes to mind. And it doesn't matter how small it is, you know, whether it's the sun shining, you've put deodorant on this morning, you've even just opened your eyes and got out of bed. You know, it, it can be absolutely anything. It's whatever is for you. So I think definitely gratitude. I think um, making sure that you stay well hydrated because mm. that's absolutely key for both your gut, your brain and all your organs to be fair um, and flushing out those toxins and then, you know, just being probably a little bit mindful of the food choices that you're making. So, you know, how, how many nutrients are you getting into your body? Are you looking at, you know, are you eating fruit and veg or are you just going for that packet of crisps or that biscuit? There's no right or wrong, but one's going to energise you and fuel your body a lot more than the other is. So I think they'd be my three top tips for people. Mm, brilliant. So I've got a couple of silly questions that I like to ask. <laughs> so if anyone's got any questions for Amanda, pop them in the comments for us now. Um, but when we've finished, Amanda, stick your, your kind of details where people can find you in the comments afterwards. Um, and, you know, do connect with her because she's totally awesome. So, you know, look her up on LinkedIn or Facebook um and get connected as paul's phone we've had him vaping we've had him clearing his throat we've had him typing on the keyboard now we've got the phone as well so you know yeah, but let's get it all in there <laughs> i know the joys of communal working at home <laughs> so <Keep> it <laughs> absolutely i'm all about keeping it real it doesn't get much more real than uh, <laughs> than in this house so tell me your favorite cake and you might not have one because I know you're super healthy but you know it could be cake biscuit just you know like something nice that you like to treat yourself to to be fair I'm dairy and gluten intolerant at the minute but I make a mean gluten and dairy free chocolate brownie and it's amazing I have to say I love that and chocolate chip cookies that I found a recipe for both gluten and dairy free as well that are delicious mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so you need to come down more often. I am not getting to sample these, so I shall bring them down next on. time. <laughs> Whenever we meet again, I'm going to be expecting a little slice of brownie for That's sure. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about guilty pleasures? I want to know what what one of your guilty pleasures is. So, guilty pleasures, to be clear, are things that you maybe you know you shouldn't do but you do things that are a bit embarrassing that kind of thing dig the dirt i think guilty pleasures is um custard because <laughs> i shouldn't have it but it's so good <laughs> is it out of a can though that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for the real sort of you know or like yeah, me like eating out, out of date bailey's out cream of the yeah out of the pot um <laughs> Magnum lollies, vegan though, but Magnum lollies. And um, from a personal one, my guilty pleasure, which I think Drew just thinks I'm mental, but dancing around the kitchen. So like cheesy music, <laughs> like S Club 7 and stuff. He hates it, but I love it. <laughs> we all need a bit of dancing around to cheese though. You know, I think it's what keeps us going in life sometimes. That's um, a good tip, because it really boosts your energy. <laughs> <laughs> it does no it does seriously I'm totally with you on that I do it in the kitchen sometimes it's a bit okay. of a kitchen activity for me I'm not sure why but yeah it does seem to happen in the kitchen more so than anywhere else so final question 
Yeah. Anything good that you are reading, watching, you know, podcasts, Netflix, LinkedIn, books, anything like that that you want to recommend? Um, depending on where you are on your journey, there are two books by um, Eckhart Tolle and the first one's called the power of now and the other one's called a new earth and you need to read them in that order um but there was some mega light bulbs in there of understanding why you have the thoughts you have why you might feel the way you do um and i think for me another um person that i really love because she's so authentic is brené brown so any of her books perfectly imperfect and all those kind of things so yeah or dare is it daring greatly that's that's a great book as well um podcast wise i quite often listen to um dr mark hyman that might be a bit too in-depth for some people but um that's quite interesting and um netflix i just love documentaries Mm. like sea spiracy and you know things about the planet because i'm very much about sustainable living um, so, yeah. Loads of good recommendations there then. So, it's one minute past one and as we know, it's, it's lunchtime. lunchtime for me. I get very excited <laughs> about which soup am I going to get today? I think it's tomato and basil actually, I'm not sure. But oh, um, nice. whatever it is, it's going to be delicious and I'm going to love every minute of it. <laughs> so, on that note, I will bid you farewell and um i will see you next week i guess bye for now you will i shall be watching on wednesday bye